You're in for a real treat today because I'm going to read a satire I wrote uh, four years ago when the city of Regina banned chickens and potbelly pigs. It's a modest proposal for preventing the stray cats, dogs, chickens, and potbelly pigs of Regina from being a burden to the Regina Humane Society or the city of Regina and for making them beneficial to the public. By Sask Boy not John Swift. <clears throat> How do you do this? Eat them. It's a pitiful sight. Rows of cats and dogs caged at the Regina Humane Society and most there due to neglectful owners who indulged an urge to buy and then were too cowardly to feast upon the pet flesh when it was no longer desired for living comfort animal. These pets, instead of bringing joy to a child or adult owner, cause financial burden upon the city who is required to raise licensing fees by $190,000. I think everyone agrees that whoever finds a solution to these stray animals and saves the public $190,000 would be regarded as a hero and a preserver of the city's fine reputation as an agricultural and animal loving capital. Indeed, pile of animal bones is the basis for naming the jewel of the city Wascana Lake. Animals play a key role in the image of the city, and from the Canada goose poop that cost millions to dig out of the lake in the winter of 2003 and 4, to the horse under every mounted police person. But I intend not only to offer a solution that benefits the city, the public, and the Regina Humane Society, but the animals themselves who are caged and await adoption into unfamiliar territories, or euthanization, and the garbage heap. Indeed, my idea stems from a solution used by the provincial government in the past decade, as well as conversation with my intelligent friend, who pointed out to me that animals are quite often tasty when prepared correctly. I hope to, my humble su suggestion is not met with any opposition, given that it carefully weighs all options and concludes the most reasonable way to save money and provide value from li stray livestock. Instead of wasting edible livestock that have been mislabeled as lost pets, the Regina Humane Society should partner with the Regina Food Bank and donate abandoned and wayward animals to where they are needed most, onto the plates of starving people in the city. A cat, I'm assured by a wealthy Hollywood celebrity, makes an excellent microwave dinner. A dog, properly fed for a few weeks, yields a stir-fry or roast fit for a queen. Chickens and pigs of different species also make excellent food and can be found homes quickly with the Colonel or Denny's. Certain designer pigs may be worth more $2,000 on the pet market than as bacon and ribs, but look at the cost of red meat these days. But currently laws in the city prevent the Regina Humane Society from finding legal buyers of swine within the limits of Regina. Fortunately, no such law prohibits the gift of pork and chicken to the Regina Food Bank, and with the right sort of inspection, stray cats and dogs can also serve their city by being served by their city after letting their previous owners down in disgrace by abandoning them. I declare with total sincerity that I have no personal stake in promoting this important idea. I have no motive beyond seeing my city save hundreds of thousands of dollars for the better use by the public and providing disgraced stray livestock with a more noble purpose than can be found at the end of a vet's toxic needle, don't you agree that it's better they find themselves at the end of a hungry person's fork? And my former deceased pet goldfish was incapable of disgracing himself by running away from home as he needed a wheelchair since 2006. I'm quite well fed, and I had a pet dog who enjoyed barbecue. Added. I guess I have a suggestion that uh, I should have had like a post of uh, poster of Elf behind me while reading this. 